All right. The record button is red, Lucas. You ready over there? Man, we got an awesome... I'm Australian now. Australia hey, today. <laughs> ...show for the viewers at home. Man, we got... Uh, welcome back, viewers. Oh, there's a hundreds of thousands of them, by the so way, Josh. Many. There's so many people well, that it, listen. It had to be a size to match this. Yeah, this, this, studio. this yeah. massive exactly. facility right here. Mm-hmm. We got Josh Lane with Jim Guys in the house. Jim Guys with a Z. Very, and, very, very uh, important. And he's a very... Um, th- this is a very interesting, very special guest because... Um, you know, uh, it's somebody else in the um, in the personal training and fitness space, mm-hmm. and uh, very relatable to what um, we do at OTG, but also very different in a lot of ways too. So, pretty dynamic show here, and um, yeah, man, we're glad to have you, Josh. Thanks for coming out, dude. Oh no, it's awesome. It's always good to chat with people who have similar ideas, similar mentalities, and, mm-hmm. and just kind of yeah, you know, chat about fitness for yeah. sure, dude. We, I mean, you know, and like we were talking about before the cameras were rolling, um, we we like to talk to anybody about anything, but if, if we can talk about, um, if we can somehow spin or, or get fitness in there, we, we will. But, There's uh, almost always a way too, right? You course. know, everyone has right. um, some type of fitness story or, you know, most successful people have something to say about, about fitness, right? Well, yeah. How so. we stay moving and stay healthy. <clears throat> yeah, right. exactly. If, if you're not healthy, you know, what, what do we, what do we say, Phil? What's that line that we put in the episode or, and, or we put in a few episodes back? Eventually you will pay. Oh yeah. You'll pay for your health at some point, yeah. whether it's now or later, yep. well, you, you know, pay, and you probably have a same, same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Behind you that, you sure. pay, you pay with using either your time or money now, or you're going to pay using your time or money yep, later. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and usually a combination of both. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so man, let, let's go ahead and enter uh, Josh. I'm going to quit. I talk a lot. As my best friend asked since we were nine years old. This is why I, don't ask him to tell a story. Yeah. So it's naturally have a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's very natural that I have a podcast. Yeah. I talk a lot. I spare no details, but I am going to hand the mic over to you and, um, we'll start with our, you know, we got a couple bullet points here. Um, and before the banter starts, so I love the banter, <laughs> the but, uh, part. yeah, man, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Like I said, I, the, the guests now know your name, like I said, Josh Lane with gym guys. Uh, let's talk about who you are, man. And then, um, and then we can, uh, kind of dig into gym guys a little bit and go from there. So, yeah. um, any, anything the viewers need to know. So, so yeah, so I am a, uh, Houston transplant. So I've been here for, I guess, 18 years now. Rock uh, and roll. Where are you from? So I've been in Philadelphia, California, Chicago, Cincinnati. Oh, so well, I've uh, hit all the coasts. And sorry the to hear that on some of those. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I am too. <laughs> but you're home now. Yeah, yeah. It, Texas. It's it's one of those where I wasn't expecting it to be somewhere that I considered to be home. But yeah, it definitely. It's just kind of you know after a while you're like, oh, this really is you know what I want. So so sure. is it like um you're talking? Has this been all during adulthood, or did you kind of um were you moving around as a kid with your parents? So and yes, both. Okay. So some of it was when I was young, and then some of it was when I was an adult. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Uh. What What it initially brought you here 18 years ago? So I came here for NASA, which oh. is pretty popular, you know, common yeah. for a lot of people, and sure. it's certainly NASA. in the part of town we live in. NASA's like pretty close, like yes. literally across the street. <laughs> <laughs> literally across the street. Yeah. Um. But uh, but yeah. So I, I came here for that. Uh, I actually I worked the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia uh, Accident Investigation Board. Oh. Okay. So you're a NASA employee. Uh, no. Or a third party, a third party. coming into ins- okay. So yeah, so I work for a commercial company, uh, and so we came in to mainly help do some visualization, to help kind of understand what was going on. Super cool, dude. So and actually, if you uh, saw anything on CNN uh-huh. during the time, any of the, the computer graphics on that, that was stuff that I did. Right. Okay. So y'all built y'all built virtual models mm-hmm. and 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 as a part of the investigation, yep. figure out what happened and everything. Yep. Dude, that is really interesting. Really cool, yeah. dude. So, so that's that's I feel how like we it, could do a whole episode about <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, so that's how I got here. It was it was based on that. I just spent enough time here, and I'm, and I'm like, I mean, I mean, it was at that point I was living in Philly. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I have an apartment that I'm never at. This is stupid. I should mm-hmm. just move to Houston. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you you were originally you were living in Philly, mm-hmm. and um, you were originally just kind of here for the job. Yep. You're gonna come down, help with third party investigate, mm-hmm. build the models, button it up, and you were gonna go home. Yeah, and then you know at that point. Um, I was working in sales, and mm-hmm. part of my territory was actually was Texas and Alabama. Okay. So a lot, a lot of my clients were here. So it was really, I was in Philly, but I was never there because all my clients were here. Right. So okay. I basically had the choice of either here, Dallas, or Huntsville, Alabama. A uh, good course, choice. Yeah, I, good choice. Well, of course, I now am very specific in saying Huntsville, Alabama, because I've made yeah. that mistake to say Huntsville, and you get a very different uh, yeah. reaction. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Tech City, you know, and, and here in Texas, uh, Huntsville is a different story, mm-hmm. different <laughs> ball game. <laughs> so you came down for work, and uh, you said, it's a stupid, I, I'm working here, all my clients are here, I got an empty apartment in Philadelphia, so you, you went back, grabbed your what you wanted, and, and came back down here. Yep. 
And then um, how did it kind of go from there? You just continued on um, with, with your your career path at the yeah, time? Yeah, so, so I stayed there for a few years um, mm-hmm. with, with that company. And then at a time when aerospace was dropping down, yep. uh, as it tends to do from time to time, time yeah, uh, I then did what a lot of other people in Houston do, is I jumped to oil and gas. Yes. And I went that route. Plenty and of money there. That's working, what I do. Working in oil and gas for a while. Uh, and then... All along, you know, my background is in, in aerospace and in, with, with math and numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I ended up getting more into... Engineering the, degree? Yep. Okay. So okay. I ended up getting more into the number side of things. Yeah. And started to go into more advanced analytics and getting into machine learning and artificial intelligence in some of those areas. Right. So I did that for a number of years. Uh, and then most recently, I was with a consulting firm doing okay. doing that for oil and gas clients. Okay. So same field, same uh, field, just kind of you know, kind of just you know, tangentially, it all kind of gets to the same place, but it's just kind of a winding path. To right. Get there. Okay. And then, um, so I guess that so you did that for a while. You jumped into oil and gas. Like, if you're in Houston, and you want to make some well. money. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, there's plenty of money and there's plenty of jobs. Um, one of my one of my best friends, Michael, uh, his dad also named Michael. Uh, we were hanging out at his house one day, and um, he's a Houston native. <clears throat> and well, I think he's a Houston native. I think he was kind of like you. He, Growing up, his dad kind of worked everywhere. Anyhow, he ended up in Houston. And um, he said, he looked over at me one day and he said um, something along the lines of, uh, it, if you live in Houston and you don't have a job or you don't have any money, it's because you don't want a job and you don't want money. Yeah. And I, I agree that, I, I mean, I feel like Houston. <clears throat> Houston's a great place to oh, live. It is. People, oh. you know, like to complain or whatever, but the weather's not that bad. There's a lot of opportunity here. There's a lot of jobs. There's a lot of good people. Mm-hmm. You have the Southern culture, Southern pride, yeah. you know, type of thing going on. It's a really great place and to live. Pretty much whatever you want is here. Yeah. Yeah. There's Any, a lot of anything, diversity. You know, if you want yeah. water, we've got water. If you want, you know, downtown, we've got that. If you yep. want, you know, pick whatever kind of food, you know, oh, ton whatever, of food. whatever you want. You it's could, all here. Yeah. It's a great place to yeah. eat. You, you could, for sure. you could eat out three times a day, every day for your entire life and probably not hit every restaurant. Oh, in guaranteed. Houston, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's great. So, well, because in that time, they're all, some of them are going to close and reopen. So. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. Man, so <laughs> awesome, dude. So you, so um, you, you switched over to oil and gas. You did that for a while, and then at some point, you started Gym Guys. Yeah. So and uh, let's let's talk about kind of where it came from and and uh, where you're at now with it. Yeah. So um, 2020, I was working for a con- uh, consulting firm, mm-hmm. uh, oil and gas sales. Yep. And. That time for oil and gas was pretty dicey with COVID. Oh, yeah. Not a very, you know, thriving market. So it was just, Absolutely. A, you know, really not very fulfilling, mm-hmm. you know, for, for what I was doing. So I started to look around of different different things that I could do. Yep. Pivot. Um, and, and, and figure out, I just, you know, continue the same traditional thing I was doing and look at other consulting firms or other kinds of things in, in the analytics space and do that. Right. Uh, and it was just one of those things where I got, you know, an email one of those day, one day that was talking about, you know, uh, fitness franchise. And I'm like, hmm. Why not? Like, what do I have to lose? I might as well at least reach out, see what it is, and, and see where it goes. Get some details. Yeah. And, you know, so started down that path and, and basically hooked up with the franchise uh, coach. Kind okay. of walked me through, hey, these are all the franchises that are out there. Yeah. A- and here's some different ideas and kind of walked through the differences and how the world works. And So and, he, he was kind of coaching you on um, how to be a franchisee? Like yes. how to pick a franchise? Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, and were you set on fitness or? I mean, I mean, that was my, that was what I thought I wanted. Okay. But I was open to it from the standpoint of, well, hey, this is what I think I want, but do I really know what I want? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. so really just kind of went through that process and, and, you know, also so, tried to understand how franchises work. Note, he hired a coach. Yes. I like that. Yeah. So, okay. I've, I've watched coaches. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you hired a coach. He's helping you kind of navigate this, um, this space of um, franchising. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, I said franchisee earlier, but you were going to be, you were going, you were looking to franchise. No, I was looking uh, to be a franchise. To be, the, to be a franchisee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. You were getting coached on how to become a franchisee. Yes. Okay. Basically, so pick, yeah. basically pick which franchise. Yep. Yeah. May, or if any franchise made sense. Yep. You know, cause certainly at the end of the process, you may get there and say, none of these work. None yeah. of these make sense to Franchising me. Franchising doesn't work for me. I want to yep. actually go just create my, come up with my own idea right. type of situation. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I thought probably about two years prior the, an idea had come into my head about maybe doing something fitness related. Okay. But it was one of those, like, how do you start? Where do you right. go? All these kinds of things. And it, yeah. and it just, you know, got, to, and then I got a, a job offer and I'm like, all right, well, I'll take the job <clears> offer <throat> and go, go to that, do that. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, I had the idea that that's what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. but I at least wanted to make sure that was the right path. Right. Um, so I went through and, and started to, you know, have a conversation with some other franchises to get a feel for how do they work? What do they do? What kinds of support do they offer? Mm-hmm. 
you know, how does all the inner, inner workings and also what do you get for your money? Yeah. You know, what is it the actually, you know, cause you are, it's not cheap. I'm not going to, yeah. right. Let's, you know, lie about it, but let's run the numbers. What, what's the yeah. average, you know, how does it look? All right. And, and so, you know, going through that process, you know, everything just kind of came back and, and made sense to me to go yeah. through and, and, and partner up with gym guys and, you know, looking at, you know, what they're providing, what they do, what the product is, mm -hmm. you know, the, the team that's available, the resources, yeah. it, it just overall, all started. To, overall yeah. cost, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, so of course, you know, once, you know, for me, you know, running the numbers, you know, looking at it of like, okay, what is this going to take to, you know, to start turning a profit and, and be able to, to do things, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was reasonable. Okay. You know, and of course I have my goals and things that I want to do, but, you know, getting to a point where to, in order to, to get, profitable it wasn't like i had to do some insane amount of stuff it was like okay this is you know the number of clients i need and, and once mm -hmm. i get that like okay that's that's you know all reasonable and makes a lot of sense and, and i know it's gonna be a lot of work but it still is you know numbers that i can grasp my hand on it's not like i need 15 million clients or something right, that's something yeah. crazy yeah. was that the main thing you were looking for like a business model that you felt comfortable with and that you felt confident that you could get to profitability quickly was that do you so, think that was the main thing well, on your mind um it was, it was one of the, the aspects, okay. you know, mm -hmm. so, so certainly, you know, looking at what I wanted to do is I started starting a new business. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I, I want to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. You know, and, and be able to kind of see where that, get, you know, I, I realized there's going to be, again, a winding path to get there, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be able to, to conceptualize how do I actually get there? Yeah. Um, and what does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the aspects, but it also was finding something that I enjoyed. Yeah. And sure. finding something that yeah. I wanted to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, so you kind of couple that together. And then, you know, cause you're not a hand, sorry, you're not a hands off type of guy. You're not a hands off owner. That doesn't, I, no, I don't know. Tell I, me I, if I'm wrong. No, but. I'm not, but I'm also, I a hundred percent realize that I'm not the expert in everything. Yeah. Sure. So Absolutely. it's one of those where it's like, I, I want to bring people onto my team mm -hmm. who know their stuff <laughs> and basically I'm hands off with them and say, all right, you know, you go off and, and do your thing. You know, I'm here if you need me. Right. But mm -hmm. you know, if I don't, you know, I'm not going to, you know, hound you or nag you or be, you know, all, all over up in your business. It's, mm -hmm. I trust you to do your job. And then, you know, let me know if you need any help. Yeah. People, you know, but, I, but I definitely do, you know, I do sessions, I work with clients. Um, so I do have that level of it, but that's, you know, I'm not scalable. Right. Mm -hmm. You as an individual. Me as an individual. Yeah, not, yeah, you know. yeah. Right. <laughs> not exactly. yet. Not yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah Maybe yeah. at some point we'll figure that out. Uh -huh. But people, man, people are the key. Yeah. yeah. Um, and people can elevate you and people can bring you down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mentality of somebody, Phil and I talk about the mentality of somebody who's willing to hire a coach. And it's not necessarily about a coach. It's about understanding you hit it a second ago that you don't know everything. You're not the expert on everything. Surround yourself <clears throat> with um, others who do know right. that can help you. So that's pretty cool. So, um, Jim, guys, um, tell us a little bit about the model. It, I know that it's an at home yep. or a, uh, a mobile. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a mobile personal training um, program, or uh, uh, I guess you could call it program or. Sure. I mean, you know, I mean, so services? Service. There you that's go. Probably okay. right service. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we do both mobile and we also do virtual. Okay. And, and so, in. When we say virtual, it's the same as a session, like a normal yep. session, except we just can't physically spot you. Mm -hmm. It's right. really the only difference. Yeah, uh, Everything else is the same. So it's not like you're just buying a, a workout program mm -hmm. that's, hey, do 10 of these, 10 of these, and, yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. call me when you're done, and yeah. you right. know, that kind of stuff. Eat a chicken breast. And, and, right. You know. <laughs> you know, so so we do have that, that same level of interaction, that same mm -hmm. level of you know critique and, and those kinds of things of you know watching your form and that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the model. So it really is bringing that fitness to wherever our clients need us to be. So whether okay. that's their house, uh, park, uh, office building, mm -hmm. uh, we go to people's vacation houses. Uh, so it's, it really is trying to, to help them, you know, really work it into their schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I think that, you know, one of the, the positives from, from COVID has been that this idea that things can come to wherever I need them to be. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have to go everywhere. Mm. Uh, some of that's good, some of that's bad, but it's this idea of, hey, we can bring fitness to people. Super convenient. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, especially during a time of COVID when everybody's, everybody's um, unsure. Everybody's, mm -hmm. I don't want to say freaking out. Some people are freaking out, but people don't know. And um, you don't know if they're comfortable and maybe you're not comfortable. However, if you have a virtual model mm -hmm. and you can do it through um, Skype or Zoom or whatever it is, Pick your platform. Um, uh, and you can bring that to them anywhere they might be, that's a really, really nice, um, you know, I guess, weapon in your arsenal or feather in your hat mm -hmm. if you're a business owner, yeah. being able to do it virtually. Well, and because then, of course, then it extends to one of the other challenges that you run into with, with any sort of fitness program is what happens when you travel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so now we've already had that built in of like, oh, you're traveling? All right, fine. Yeah. No biggie. We, we, can, we can pivot to do no virtual sessions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, 
Go to and the, when you go get to the back, gym. we'll go back to you know, go to the uh, gym at the hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, or you know, hey, just grab some bands. You know, we'll give you some bands that you can take with you, and yep. that's perfectly fine. You can do, or even do body weight. Super cool, man. Yeah. That's so. a, that's a very. Um, I didn't even think about. So I'm, I'm kind of imagining all this as you're talking about it, and I didn't even consider that one because, like you said, when you travel, uh, fitness a lot of time takes a back seat mm-hmm. for most people. However, if you have this option, or um, you've hired gym guys. Um, yeah, they, they can, you get on a call or, uh, they provide you with some bands or, or whatever. And they, they pop up on your screen wherever you're yep. at and they're like, okay, let's, this is what we're doing. So that's a pretty cool, yeah. that's a pretty cool option. Um, <clears throat> so speaking of being, you know, I guess that you're kind of dynamic if you're, yes. if you're, mm-hmm. um, uh, mobile or virtual personal training. So fit, I, I brought this up before we started. Um, and he, this is also one of my bullet points here. So, Phil, and he seemed adamant about talking about this. He said, let's talk about why gym guys and OTG are not enemies or are not um, rivals or whatever. Uh, And not necessarily just because he owns OTG and uh, you are the franchise Mm -hmm. owner of gym guys, but uh, just, I guess, that they're two personal training services in general. Yeah. Uh, and why they're not why they're not enemies and and, and uh, you don't have to treat it as such. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the obvious answer is there's more no people for all of us. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, there, there are more people that need hundred percent. That's first and foremost. Are, you can't yeah. train every single person, <laughs> and, and neither can he. And, right. and also, I think the other thing too is you know there are lots of personal trainers that are out there. Mm-hmm. Not all of them are good. Absolutely. And, and so, really, you know, when you start finding people who have the same kind of terminology, talk the same language, have the same ideals, have the same kinds of things they're reaching for. You want to make sure that you start promoting that. Mm-hmm. You yeah. want these these successful quality you know, uh, organizations thriving. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, you know, my coach. You know, I support him and, and his things. Actually, I, I partner with him, and he, same idea of he's got a physical space. He does physical yep. classes, uh, but it just makes sense to go through and partner with people like that because that's how we all get better. For this sure. isn't a competition. I mean, some, we'll compete in some areas uh, for some things like races or stuff like that. Yeah, this space we're trying to get people healthy. That's right. And, man. you know, I, at the end of the day, I don't care if you help with me, with one of my guys, Takes Phil, a village. you know, whatever it may be, that's really what I'm hoping for is, is that people start getting healthier. Yeah. yeah we're and just that, trying to help people win. Yeah. You know, we want them to win the game of life and there's ability, plenty of man. people out there. Uh, and, and I think that that's a really good point. Even like I have my own thought process for this question, but I, I like what you said where. You know, obviously there's enough people for everyone, mm-hmm. and I agree with that 100%. <clears throat> and then just uh, spreading the right message. There's a lot of bad messaging yes. <laughs> in oh. health and fitness. There's a lot of bad messaging. So if we can just all work together to promote the right ideals, the right values, and if we can do that, we will win. Yeah. Everyone will win. because hone, hone in on the, the, the stuff that matters. Yeah. And and put less effort and attention on the things that don't matter as much. Yep. And yep. Uh, it's a combined effort. It takes a village, right? Yeah. And, and the other aspect, too. I mean, the first word is personal. Yeah. yeah. So it is a very personal decision. So some people work better with other kinds of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just is a matter of, um, you know, I've had a conversation with a couple different uh people over the past couple of days of some people like high energy. Some yep. people don't like high energy. You know? right. So it's just this, this matter of some people just want to go in different environments. Maybe yep. it is some mm-hmm. people like to have a, a gym space. Yep. Some people want to have come to them. You know, so there are different options and different things that make sense for different people. Yeah. And um, Phil, were you going to say something? Or? Uh, I was just going to um, kind of go into what he was saying is the competition thing about competing where it's not a huge competition because, you know, we do have different uh, avatars of clients. Now, the client's the same person, but because they can't make it to the gym, well, then I can refer them to Josh, mm-hmm. yes. right? We're just trying to take care of people. Yep. But I, I think that it's also important to touch on the fact that <clears throat> without competition, we can't give the client the best result. Right. Because of competition, because... In the back of my head, even though Josh and I are friends, in the back of my head, I'm thinking about, man, what is he doing right? And what can I do to make sure that my services are just as good as his? Vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and vice versa. You know, I want him to see, like, when you came to the gym that first time, I told you everything, all the the industry secrets. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I all the the special things that we do at OTG, I shared with him. Yeah. Right? Because I'm not worried because I know that I'm doing it the best that I can. If he wants to go do something and he wants to try to match it, 
then I just need to step my game up. And by doing that, we provide a better product and a better service mm -hmm. to the customer, yeah. right? That's how businesses win. Yep. I think that um, I like that a lot. Um, I didn't even consider that point. But the in the beginning of that, you said um, because of competition, <clears throat> you're able to provide a better service. And I think that mm -hmm. there's something else to be said uh, on that note, too. Because Josh is – or Josh and Jim guys <clears> – <throat> are um, a, a competitor in the way that they're a business operating in the same space as you. But because he exists, now there's another option. Like he said, first words, personal. Mm -hmm. So now, because that competition exists, now there's a whole nother realm of people who can, who can uh, purchase uh, personal training services that may not Maybe they can't get to the gym. Right. May, right. Maybe um, it's not the right setting for them. Or they didn't even know his gym existed. Right. They, yeah. yeah. You know, or didn't even know that my service existed. Yeah. You know? right. So now it's a matter of, oh, well, you don't want to work out in, in your house? Yeah. Hey, I've got a gym for you. Oh, hey, you know what? It's actually around the corner from me. Yeah, yeah. I know a you guy. Know, stuff like you know? that. Um, and I've actually been into, so because that competition um, exists, now more people are reached. And I've actually been in the gym, not necessarily when he referred somebody to you, I know he has referred mm -hmm. people to you, but I was actually there one time somebody came in and I think this has happened a couple different times. And, um, I've definitely heard him take calls and they, they're looking for a regular membership gym just to go train at. Yeah. And he says, Hey, listen, that's not necessarily my model. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's a local owned gym right down the street, uh, called Steelworks, which is mm -hmm. actually where yep. we all, he has got a membership. I got a membership. My wife has a membership. And he says, uh, go down there and check them out. It's a great facility. They got a great price. That seems to be more of what you're mm -hmm. looking for. And I know some people may think that that's taboo in the uh, in the business owner space, but feels like, hey, look, man, I just want to help people the best that I can. Right. And what I provide, what I am selling, is not necessarily what they're looking for. Right. I'm not going to try to put a, you know cram a round peg into a square hole and 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 inconvenience them and inconvenience inconvenience my clientele that I'm actually selling my product to. I'll send them down the road. I'll help another local gym and um, we'll all work together. And if so, you know if somebody calls him and says, hey, I'm looking for a trainer that uh, comes to my house, he can say, I know for sure. He would say, listen, none of my trainers do that. However, mm -hmm. I can give you Josh Lane's phone number. Um, he provides a service like that, get in contact with them and they're going to go wow, thank you so much. Correct. Yep. And you People know, really appreciate that oh, too. Yeah, it, it's <clears throat> I think that comes into and talks about who we are as business owners mm -hmm. of, you know, understanding our limitations and understanding, you know, what we're really trying to provide and what we're mm -hmm. trying to sell. And it's not that we're going to try and do everything for everybody because you can't unless right, you're, right. you know, even, even Amazon can't do everything for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so close, you, they're close, they're close. <laughs> but that, that idea that you can do everything for everybody, it, it just doesn't work for anybody. Everyone loses yeah. in that area. Mm -hmm. and that, right. The client loses, the company loses. I, that, you know. that's, it's a really good point that both sides lose yep. that battle. Right. The, the business, like if we were to try to convince that person, I'm going to waste my time, waste, waste my breath. Even if they do sign up for personal training, they're, they're not, not staying. Yeah. Exactly. They're not going to be happy. They're not staying for very long. So I wasted my time. I wasted their money because they're going to pay more for personal training yep. than yep. for a membership, right? Nobody's going to be happy at the end of the day. I yeah. risk I risk somebody bad mouthing our business because that's not what they wanted in the beginning, and you know it's just and it's just bad all, mm -hmm. all, all around. They're going to be they're going to be in your facility around your clientele. Yes, that want bad to be culture. There. Yeah, leads yeah. to bad culture. It's right. a yeah. culture problem, yep. right? Because if you got somebody who's not really happy, doesn't necessarily want to be there, and there's one, and you got ten others training in there, and they are happy to be there. You know, it's just kind of a it's kind of um. Yeah. It's not a situation yeah. that is ideal. Right. Well, and then it also creates a challenge culturally, internally in the company. Yep. Uh, sure of, does. You know, once you start having those kinds of things, it's like, oh, well, we went, we went this way. Why can't we go a few feet further? Why can't we go a little bit further? Mm -hmm. You know, you start mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, end up second guess yourself. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, start to kind of erode some of those walls that you put up to, you know, boundaries and those kinds of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the end, you know, like I said, it all will, it all comes back to culture and, um, it all, all that ultimately comes back to what you said. There's plenty of people out there. Oh, totally. that, yeah. That I think it's really about training. having a, a growth mindset as well versus a fixed yeah. mindset or constantly being worried. They call it like being small minded. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, this person's mine. This person's mine. This person's mine. There's plenty. There, right, yeah. You know, that's, a, that's just a small mindset yeah. in general. You know, Houston's a big city. <clears throat> Huge. Oh, yeah. there, there's enough. There's enough. Absolutely yeah. massive. Yeah. And yeah, there are a lot of personal trainers. 
But you said it too, Josh. Uh, not all of them are good. Yep. Right. right? And I trust think me, I've, I've interviewed a lot of them. That <laughs> yeah. While there's um, guys out there like y'all, y'all two sitting here, I don't personally train people. Um, they good thing is that y'all are out there, y'all are doing it right, and y'all are referring the individuals that fit each other's model mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. to each other. <clears throat> so word of mouth. And, you know, everybody wins in that case. Yeah. Um, which is pretty cool, man. So, Josh, I got to ask you, dude, and we're going to pivot a little bit here. All right. Uh, Phil said the word triathlon. Yes. Uh, whenever we sat down. And you're a guy, you're a triathlon-er. Yes. Would that be Go, a let, triathlete? Triathlete. Yeah. triathlete. <laughs> yeah. I like triathlon-er. What do you think, so, Lucas? It doesn't roll off the tongue as easily, though. Oh, yeah. See, Lucas said he likes it. Triathloner. Well, triathlon er. Gotta fix the dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> Triathlete er. So tell us a little bit about triathlons, man. How um how many have you done? Uh, how, how did you how do you even I feel like if somebody comes up to me and goes, Hey man, you want to run a triathlon? No. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not that yeah. like I just feel like um unless I um Lose a bet or... Well, you know. <laughs> I, no, I, well, yeah. But unless I like specifically trained, it, it would be a waste of time and a waste of money. And it would be, um, I, I would be embarrassed, right? So like, how do you get to the point where um, you just got to do it? Or let, let's let's hear a little bit of background yeah, on so, it. Yeah, so I didn't necessarily plan to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't think was, anybody was, plans it. Well, some <laughs> people do. I mean, there are people who that's that's what they started. And they, I mean, kids in, in high school and college and, yeah. you know, are doing it. Um, so for me, it came from, I, I have a running background. So I was a runner in high school and college. So I competed division one. Nice. Uh, so, you know, had that in, in my background and, you know, I ended up choosing education and mm-hmm. you know, getting good grades and those kinds of things. Some of my classes just can, you know, competed with practice time and I just couldn't, right. I couldn't do it. Right. And then, you know, got a job and those kinds of things, but I still enjoyed running. I still enjoyed the, the feeling it helped, you know, it was a mental release of being mm-hmm. able to go and just kind of be free and just kind of, you know, do things. Yep. Uh, but I trained like I did when I was in high school and college. Well, when you start to get a little bit older, mm. you kind of can't do that anymore. Right. And, and so I went through this phase of training for a while, getting hurt, training for a while, getting hurt, training for a while. And I did that for, I'm sad to say, almost 20 years. Wow. Where I, I just kept on doing it. And finally, you know, I kind of got to the point where, hey, I, I need to figure this out. Like, I, I really want to have something in my life that helps me get healthy um, and, and really kind of go through and, and be able to do something continuously that I, right. that I really enjoy. Uh, and it just so happened, I'm like, all right, let me, you know, try going back and running again. And I'm like, all right, I need to get a new pair of shoes. Uh, so I, and there was a, a brand that I'd seen, I don't even know where I saw it, but I saw it, seen this brand. I'm like, it's an interesting to me. It's an interesting model. The shoes look cool. You know, I wanted to go check them out. And so looked, you know, what local stores had them. And mm-hmm. there's two stores that had them. One of them was the, uh, sun skiing, whatever that is. Off. Sun and ski. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the other one was a, you know, who's now my coach. So it's, you know, Johnny C's powerhouse. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I, I think he probably knows a little bit more about what he has more for. of a local independently owned type of yeah. place. And, yeah. And, you know, just, you know, did a quick look at it. I'm like, okay, he probably has a little more knowledge. So I went over there and, you know, bought the shoes and he's like, oh, well we also, you know, do, you know, uh, group runs, you know, on, on Saturdays, so you're more than welcome to join us. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'll, I'll do that. So I started, you know, kind of running those guys for a while. And, you know, as, as I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, well, I, I kind of need to do something else too. I was, at this point, I was also commuting out to Katy. Mm. So I had, you know, an hour and a half drive both ways. Uh, I've got a daughter. So I'm like, well, I can't run every day. I got to find something else to do. Right. Uh, so I ended up, you know, I had a, a relatively cheap bike and I ended up buying an indoor trainer. Okay. So now I could ride my bike in my house at either in the morning or at night when my daughter's asleep. Yep. And at least get some sort of exercise and get some sort of cross training so I can still kind of keep training. Right. And, and then, of course, you c- compound that with the fact that I'm now with, you know, Johnny's group is a triathlon group. Right. I didn't plan on it. It's just that's what they were. And like, well, you're already biking. You're already running. Like, ah, let's throw the swimming thing Why in there, not yeah. just go ahead and do it? I'm like, well, guys, I, like, I can't swim. Yeah. Like, I cannot drown. But that's really about the the, the same. No the idea same. about it. I can avoid drowning. That's really about yeah, it. Yeah. So so that's kind of where I was. And, and even you know riding a bike, like I had ridden maybe 15, 20 miles, but that was a long ride, and it was more just to kind of keep my legs moving. It wasn't yeah. really big, competitively or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. So so I kind of got to a point where uh, I was going through and doing some things, and one training run in particular, I remember 
you know, looking at my watch, and I'm like, we just ran a half marathon. Like, not even planning on 13, it. 13.2? 13.1. Oh, 13.1. Not even thinking about it. I'm like, that was really easy. So, of course, and I did the Laporte half marathon. This is 2019. Did the Laporte half marathon, like, the next week. Uh, and just, you know, enjoyed it. I'm like, all right, well, now that I've come this far, I, I might as well go ahead and go the next step further. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I know that in order for me to actually be able to do an actual triathlon, I got to figure out the swimming part, which isn't the part that I'm going to dislike the most and going to struggle with the most. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be the most foreign to you. Yeah, so so really, so my brain, the way that my brain works, the way that I figured out I would do it was I had to put some real skin in the game. Mm-hmm. So I bought a bike. Yeah. And at that point, that bike was worth more than, more than my car, <laughs> which, which is the typical triathlon you know, uh-huh. challenge of either you have a really crappy car or you have a really expensive bike, one yeah. of the two. Uh, Never mine, both. Mine was the, the latter, or the former, I had a crappy car. Um, so, you know, I went through and, and did that. So that then put that, okay, I've, I've got this really nice, fancy bike. Like, I got to, you know, put the work in to be actually go ahead and swim. So, so yeah, so that's kind of where it started. Uh, the first race I was supposed to uh, do was uh, an Olympic distance. So that's, I don't know, 600 meter swim, 30 mile bike, and 10K run. Those distances may be off. Mm-hmm. I'm not 100% sure. That was going to be uh, Memorial Day weekend of mm-hmm. 2020. Okay. Which, of so course. that would have been your first one. That would have been my first one. Which, okay. of course, didn't happen because of, you know, other events. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I then, you know, pivoted and ended up saying, well, all right, well, I already trained for this. I might as well go ahead and go. You know, I already felt in shape. I already felt good swimming. So, I'm like, all right, well, sure. Let's go ahead and do a half Ironman. Yep. So, 70.3. So, that's 1.2 mile swim, 56 mile bike, and 13.1 mile run. Okay. Uh, registered for one in November. And it actually went off. Uh, they were able to go through and, and do you know enough things to go through and get to do that. So yeah. that was my first one in November. Uh, this, this past November? No, November 2020. 2020. Okay. Uh, so I did that. I didn't drown. Nice. That was, that was, so basically, I, I one went, mile oh, swim. Man, like. Yeah. I can't imagine. Ooh. Don't count the laps of how many it takes to get to a mile. Yeah. How many I, laps in a pool is that? Yeah. I, so it's 80, 88. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I could do one. So it's, it's, four, just, it's, it's four laps per, get, per 100. I can't get the. Um, the technique, like I can swim, like you said earlier, I can yeah. swim to save my life. I won't drown. But to get in a pool and actually swim laps, nope. I don't know. Maybe it, I probably need to hire a coach. It, well, you know, it, to, it takes to help time. Out, it but. really does. And, and so <clears throat> it's one of those things where, you know, it is, it's purely all technique. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a lot of it too is just getting in and doing it. And is this, was this an open water swim? Yeah. Okay. Much different, right? Oh, totally. It, yeah, it, you got it's currents. Totally different. Um, luckily, most of the, 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 the two courses that I've done are relatively calm. Um, mm. One's up. One's a lake up uh, Lake Conroe. Okay. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, and then Galveston, you actually are on the bay side, so it's okay. not too bad. Yeah. Uh, but it is, you know, it still is a little. You got wind and things like that that do make it a little bit choppier. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I've done uh, three half Ironmans now. Um, I was gonna do Galveston this April, and mm-hmm. then a couple of things popped up. Uh, technically, I didn't register in time because it sold out. Mm, uh, but okay. it's okay. one of those where I was even not sure if I was really in the right shape to, to do it. Right. Another half iron race? Yeah. Okay. Um, it was one of those things where I just, I, you know, I, I did the Houston half. I, I trained really hard for the Houston half. Yeah. Uh, just the half marathon. And during that, I, I, I didn't bike as much. I, I still was swimming, but not nearly as much. And it, just a n- number of things happened. I just didn't feel strong enough either swimming or biking to actually really perform the way I'd want to. Yeah. Um, so for that kind of money, I'm like, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do it. Plus it was past registration time. So. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so now I'm still training. Um, and then it's just a matter of what my next race is. And I haven't quite figured out what that's going to be. Okay. Well, you well, have this new thing now in your life too. This whole new, this new business is a very hard time to start a new business. Yes. Okay. And commit to something like high end tri- triathlons yes. start at the half Ironman level. We're not talking about sprint triathlons right. where you can go out and do it in an hour. We're talking about. How long does it take to do a half Ironman? Like, what's your time? What, what are we so talking I'm, about? I'm at like six hours. Six hours. Six hours. hours. <laughs> so you don't which, train which, for a which month. Of course Most not, people don't even own. sleep six hours a night. <laughs> yeah. God. You know, so I couldn't, like, to start a business and commit to something like doing half Ironmans mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's intense, dude. That is intense. Yeah. So, so, and then of course, then then the next logical question after you do a half Ironman is the full. I course, that was my next is, question. Is, we're getting there. Is, we're getting there. Um, and, and so that's that's one of the things I'm I'm kicking around. Uh, okay. I haven't quite. And really, it comes down to just 
a lot of what you're just talking about. I'm like, that's a lot of time commitment yeah. to go through and do that. Um, there's a bunch of guys I'm trained with that are doing Florida in November. Okay. Is that a full? Yeah. Is it, okay. So, so I'm kind of... Is that the future for you? Uh, I, I at least want to do one. Okay. One, you know, at least, you know, and again, you know, talking about, you know, when I first started, I'm like, I'm not going to do a full. Like, that's, yeah. just, that's just insane. That's just absolutely crazy. Like, there's no way I'm doing that. And now I'm kind of like, well, yeah, it makes sense to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. it's, it's just one of those things to go through and do it. So, so really, it comes down to, do I have the time? I mean, mm-hmm. it is a pretty good, you know, big financial commitment as well to yeah. go through and do that. Um, but it, it's, I, I think, it, you know, if it's not this year, it's probably next year. Yeah. Rock and roll, Amazing. man. So you're going to do a full one. Yep. I, uh, I'll have all of you know, I committed to the Galveston Half Marathon next year. There you and go. I think that's pretty badass too. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It doesn't, have, it doesn't sound nearly <laughs> as cool as an Iron Man. <laughs> but you know, uh, shout and, out and, and, J.R. Shaw. You know, whatever, whatever event you're trying for, it's big to you. That's yeah. right. So it doesn't oh, matter. Man, that's a great it's, point. You know, yeah. a, a full Iron Man yeah. or half or a sprint or yeah. getting off the couch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, whatever that is for you, that's the important thing. And that's that's what we're trying to, to help people get to. Is it doesn't matter what that goal is. Yep. Mm-hmm. But let's set a goal. Let's the, set yeah. some targets that to get you to that goal. And that that's such a cool thing, too, because it's evolving as well. Just like when you started, like, there's no way I'd do a full right. man, Iron Man. And now you're like, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Because it evolves right. over time. You know, your goals change. You know, at first, it's like this huge hurdle, you know. But once you get into it, you're like, oh, I could do this. You build your self-confidence. And, there's just, and so that kind of goes back to something that we talk about a lot, which is sometimes just about getting started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't have to start Begin. with the goal of an Iron Man. Right. Begin. Yeah, just do something. Can you run around your block? Right. Yeah. Let's walk around the block can, first. Yeah, yeah you know, walk like, around the block. And then eventually can that you can evolve. enter the pool without drowning? Yes. Yeah. And then... Take the stairs. And then, right. yeah. and then you can jump in and then you can dive in. Yeah. You know? And uh, so, yeah, there's something huge to be said for just starting. Just getting that indoor bike mm-hmm. and then getting the regular bike. You yeah. Know? And, and that's one of the things that, that certainly, you know, when I... A lot of people get intimidated by oh, I got all the stuff you got to do, all the things you got to do. You don't have to do it all at once. That's right. You know, so. you can go through, and that's kind of what I've done. I've gone through, and I got the bike. That was like the first thing. And then after that, it was, you know, each, each well, race. Well, no, I think I the kinda... first thing was the shoes. Well, yeah. For, yeah. They wanted to get <laughs> sure. the shoes. The running. Sure. The, the, and then the, you met, and then you met uh, Johnny. 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 Mm-hmm. And now yeah. look at you about to run yep. a damn Iron Man. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Crazy. Dude. So. So I love it. This guy goes to buy some shoes. A couple years later, he's running a. He's doing an Iron Man. Oh, that's kind of what you know. A lot of people end up doing. Is it, yeah. Once once you get started and you find something you are passionate about, then oh, it just yeah. grows from there. And then mm-hmm. it, you know it, it does become part of your life. Absolutely. And, and that's man. kind of you know a lot of what you know trying to do is you know in order to be successful, in order to get to a point where you're feeling good about what you're doing in your life, mm-hmm. it has to become part of your life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You, know, you can't just do it <clears throat> once or twice a month. Mm-hmm. It's not going to get you there. For sure, mm-hmm. man. That I'm glad that you said what you just said because I'm going to ask you the question that we ask all most of the people we interview. Because uh, somebody's going to be like, "Oh, well, you didn't ask so and so," and then they're going to call uh, me out. I think on everyone's it. had to answer this question. How Episode number twelve has yeah. fitness <laughs> in, impacted or influenced your life? So I, let me. I'll start off. Obviously, you make your living at this point. Yep. Um. So that's a you're feeding yourself, mm-hmm. and then so so take it from there, man. Uh. How, how would you say, um, I mean, there's a lot of people that have qu- answers like, oh, it helps me manage stress. Um, it helps me make my living. It's um, built my confidence. So you have any anything along those lines that's helped you with? Yeah, I mean, I mean so yes is the first answer, you know, <laughs> from the standpoint of, of all those things. But I, but I think for me, it, it, it is one of those things that, that touches that, that passion point for me. It's something yeah. I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, it is kind of that that release for me. So it is, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, meditation and those kinds of things. That's me, you know, it used to be just when I ran. Yep. But now I get that same feeling when I'm on on my bike. And, you know, I will admit, I do get that same feeling in the pool now. Ooh. Where, I don't know about that. It's really quiet. (laughs) Yeah. It's really quiet. Yeah. Especially if you get in the pool, there's no one else there. Mm -hmm. It it is really quiet. You're swimming with your, with your brain and your breath. You know, I mean, again, it it is so quiet. So, so there is a lot of that where, you know, a lot of people talk about that. And and that for me, that is my time to go through and just work through stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's me and myself and I go through and, and, you know, sometimes I'll get something stuck in my head and I'll rattle around for a little bit or I'll think about something else or, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever it may be and, and kind of come back to it and, you know, so I spend a lot of that time that gives me that opportunity to go through and start to think through some things. You know, whether it's, you know, deep philosophical things, whether it's just what do I have to do the rest of the day yep. or what did I forget that I had to do? You know, mm, all those different kinds mine. of things. You know, <laughs> it it gives you that sure. opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it does check a lot of those boxes. Yeah. And, and that's where I think you have to get to for any sort of successful habit. 
it, it can't be something that you hate. It can't be something like that you, that. Mm-hmm. you uh, dread doing. You know, it, it's got to be, I mean, you know, most days when I'm going to work out, it's dark outside. Yeah. So it's, you know, all right, I, I got to enjoy what I'm doing. Because it's early or because it's late? Both. Uh, yeah. Okay. But it's more often it's early. Okay. Yeah. Well, good, well, good deal, dude. So um, what would you say to somebody who is um, thinking about, um, we can do that, we can ask two questions here, thinking about maybe starting to train for a triathlon or an Ironman or somebody who is thinking about starting a fitness journey in general, somebody who hasn't started yet? Yeah, I mean, I think the answer is similar, is start. Start. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, you know, we touched on it a little bit, but I think really it's starting to ask people for suggestions and mm-hmm. advice. You know, not necessarily having to go and find immediately a personal trainer, right? Yep. But but find someone that can help figure out. Hey, where are you right now? Yep. Let's 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 figure out wh- where are you right now. Yep. And what makes sense for where you Baseline. are, where you want to go? Yeah. And, and start to figure out. Okay, maybe you know, maybe you should worry about. Hey, let's just walk on the block. Yep. Or maybe if you're already a competitive, whatever it is. Okay. Hey, yeah. Maybe you can go through and do these things. Maybe you've got some of that background, or, or maybe you want to do that. Uh, and really kind of trying to figure out. You know. Where's that baseline? You know, that's another word that I, I use a lot of, you know, yeah. figure out what, what that starting point is. And then where do you want to go? Yeah. You know, what kinds of things do you want to do? Specific. You know, and, and let's figure out how do, how do we get there? You know, mm-hmm. in some cases it may be, oh, that's easy. We can get there tomorrow. Yeah. In some cases it may be, well, you know, hate to be blunt, but it may take you a little bit to get there. Yeah. You know, but, but we want to get you there in the right way. Right. One you know, step always, at a time. We always talk about people, you know, in one of the class things of, you know, a lot of people, you know, want to lose weight. Well, there's lots of ways to lose weight. Absolutely. You know, really, you know, I've heard this before, you know, we don't have a losing weight problem. We have a problem with keeping the weight off. That's true. Mm. You know, That's so true. really, you know, losing weight, you know, Keep- starve and dehydration. Yeah. 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 You're going to lose weight real fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that's been proven. It doesn't stay off and actually end up causing a lot more problems. So really the, the, the challenge is, okay, yes, you want to lose weight, but how do we do it the right way? How do we yeah. go through and make it such that it becomes part of your lifestyle such that you can keep it in that fashion? And it's not something you have to worry about, uh, my diet or whatever it is or those kinds of things. It just becomes part of your life. Yeah, mm-hmm. sustainable. Mm-hmm. Something that um, something that you'll keep going after every day, keep chipping away at, and something that you won't uh, burn out, yeah. get, get exhausted from doing, or uh, um, something that um, uh, you enjoy. You, mm-hmm. And if you enjoy it, um, then it can be carp. You said it can be it can become part of your life, and then um, it'll evolve. Yep. And um, you know, I think if uh, if you can if if you can start and you can ask the questions, you can seek the help, then you can you can build a personal program mm-hmm. for yourself with the right help, yep. right? That's sustainable, and you can you can keep that weight off. You can get in better shape. You can build muscle. Whatever the goal is, you yeah. can run an Ironman. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that the the other big part about that whole process is a level of personal honesty. Yeah, uh, of being oh, able oh, to good point. Great point to look at it and, and recognizing yourself what's realistic. Yeah, and, and be able to have some of those. They're not all fun conversations. They're not all yeah. fun thought processes. But but have that realistic. You know, okay this is what I want to do. Is it actually feasible that I can go off and do this? Yep. You know, is it feasible for me who's never been in the pool to go and swim 1.2 miles in 30 days? Yeah, no. Probably not. Yeah. You know, so trying to kind of figure out some of those things, and, and that's also part of, you know, having some people in your corner to help kind of back you up and say, well, maybe not Let's this just through a little bit. Yeah, maybe you know? that's, a, you know, a, a journey that we can go on, but but being able to have that, because a lot of times you, you, you talk to people and you have these conversations of, oh, I want to do this, um, you know, I want to put on, you know, 30 pounds of muscle in six months. Mm-hmm. Okay, that may be possible, but that's going to take a lot of work. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and some of these kinds of goals that people have, they just don't realize the context. You know, so yeah. a lot of it is, okay, we, you know, here's what it takes in order to get to yeah. that point. Yeah, very nuanced. Mm-hmm. Very, very nuanced, man. So uh, I have a what? question, kind of a selfish question, because sure. last year I was thinking about taking on a triathlon, actually. Okay. And uh, I'm just curious, when you're training for a, for a triathlon or recommendation, like, <clears throat> I'm just very curious in general, of how, how much strength training are we talking about mixed in with, with these running days, biking days, swimming days? Like, what is, what's a workout split or program three months into a triathlon? Like, what, what's something like that look like? Yeah, so what I try to do, and that's the word try, okay. don't always succeed. Uh, but I try to end up having, you know, usually ends up being two to three swims a week. Okay. Two to three runs a week and two to three bikes a week. 
And then usually I try to do one to two strength work workouts. Okay. okay. Uh, so you're doubling up yeah. on, on a lot of these days. Uh, then. A lot of days you end up do doubling up, but okay. you know, but then it's becomes, you know, what is the intention of that workout? You know, so a lot of times you'll end up having, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll partner, usually I'll double strength, uh, weightlifting in one of the activities just mm, because yeah. it ends up working out that way to, to yeah. make, make that timing uh, work, you know, cause really depending on where you are, I'm not trying to bulk, right? I'm really trying to mitigate, mitigate injuries. Yeah. yeah that's really, a great point. That's you know, a great trying point. To do things. And also, you know, one of the things about endurance training is the body tries to make itself better at doing endurance. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, one of the things that prevents you from being good at endurance is muscle. Yeah. yeah. Right. So one of, the, yeah, so one of the things that you end up doing is you do end up losing muscle as you do more endurance. Mm -hmm. So sending that endurance, that's muscle building signal does help kind of counter some of that and, and helps then prevent injuries and those kinds of things. But that's kind of the general split. Mm -hmm. um, most of those workouts are, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you usually will end up having two long workouts that are your long run, your long, long bike that well, usually most people end up doing on the weekend. Like per week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. What about nutrition? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, let's talk there's, about it just real quick. You there's there's, there's lots of it. Um, it, you know, it, it, it definitely is a critical part because, you know, you have to make sure you have enough fuel to actually get through mm -hmm. and do the workout. So for, you know, so really it comes down to trying to figure out, you know, how much, how many, you know, calories you need during the day, um, to go through and do that, you know, try and do that as healthy as you can. Um, but it's also, how do you recover? And, and yeah. for some of those things you're yeah. doing, you know, two a days, you know, you need to make sure you have enough fuel to sleeping. Recover. Oh, sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Of course mm -hmm. you have to do all that stuff. Uh, um, general, um, uh, general macro split, not numbers. Would you say you're a higher carb, uh, mid range protein, low fat? Or personally, high, I, personally, I'm a high carb. Uh, you're a high carb guy just because I can do that yep. and mm -hmm. it works for me. Body uh -huh. type more lean naturally. Yeah. So, it, and, I, and, I, and I like them. Yeah. Same. Like most people do. Oh. I'm a high carb guy myself. I'm a low fat, high carb help. I've, uh, I've tried going the other way and it just doesn't work for me. Uh -huh. okay. and, and so it's one of those things that, you know, when I talk to my clients about nutrition, you really, I try to nail down protein, yep. start there. And yeah. then carbs and fat is kind of what makes sense and what works for you. Some people can Man, see why, work, they, why we get along. Yeah. Works out pretty well. Yeah. Uh, like but, but that's the, you know, so, so yeah, I'm more adamant about trying to make sure I hit my, my protein tar targets mm -hmm. and then everything else is you know, whatever it is. <clears throat> takes in order to get me to that, that point. So, okay. Um, but I definitely am more of a car person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. especially, you know, one of the other things that I also believe in is, you know, whenever I'm training, I'm training as if I'm going to race. Yeah. So the same things I'm doing when I'm training are what I'm going to do when I race. So the same, uh, practice like you play. nutrition that I'm doing when I'm running and, and riding is the same stuff I do when I race. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got to make sure that I can actually do that stuff. Sustainable. It's, you real, know, it's realistic. You know, and, and go through and do that. You know, you don't want to sit there on race day and realize you don't like the taste of it. Or it creates, you know, stomach problems or other oh, yeah. problems. Not enough point. or it's too much. Or yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. you know, and those are all, for the most part, they're all sugar. Right. You know, that's the quickest and fastest thing to get in your body. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. Awesome, those, there's, there's days that I have lots and lots of carbs. Awesome. <laughs> <That's> what's up? <laughs> so uh, before we close this thing out, Josh, um, where can uh, the listeners find you at? What's the, is it, is it an email, a phone, a, a social media page, all? Yeah, so so really, there's there's two different options. You, know, you can go through uh, Gym Guys, so it's just gymguys.com. With a gym, Z. With, with a Z. That is the important one. Uh, and then certainly, you know, I'm on all those different social media platforms on that standpoint. Uh, so that it actually is Gym Guys of South Houston. Gym Guys of South Houston, okay. And then uh, you can also, uh, on Instagram, I'm uh, the Josh Lane. The Josh Lane and Gym Guys of South Houston. Yep. Awesome, man. So, uh, yeah, y'all hit up um, y'all hit up Josh if you'd like some um, mobile and or virtual personal training. Exactly. And um, also, if you'd like to talk to somebody who does triathlons and Ironmans, because I ain't your guy. <laughs> I am not your guy. I mm -hmm. uh, will be running the half marathon in Galveston next year like a badass. But, uh, yeah, anything else? Um, any, any closing comments? Phil, Josh? I don't think no. so. I'm man. just glad you came on, man. And I'm, no, I I'm really, uh, I really want people to understand that, you know, even though we work in the same niche or industry or whatever you know there, there's no reason for people to to hate each other for that and now there's something to be said for healthy competition oh, totally. i know we already talked about this but um it's just i think it's such a great thing for people to make sure that they understand that there is something to be said for healthy competition and don't get me wrong anyone like in the the gym space that does what i do personally like i'm sure you feel the same way if someone else in your area is doing in-home personal training mm -hmm. you know that you're better than them right. 
That's right. It's just the thing. Yeah. It's just the thing. And, and you have to be. I mean, yeah. that's the, you know, that has to, and you have to have that mentality. Or else, what are you mm-hmm. doing? But at the same time, I, and I know that. Okay, I don't. I'm not worried about any mm-hmm. other personal training facility in our area. Right. We, what we do is better. It's it, there's no question, you mm-hmm. know. But I think that that level of, of uh, a healthy competition and just really wanting to help people at the end of the day uh, is just so important. So that's kind of what I wanted to end on. Yeah, yeah no, I 100 yeah. agree. So I think that um, I'm going to close this out with one of my favorite, Uh-oh. with one of my favorite oh, stories and lines I heard from a movie because <laughs> Phil was saying. You know, whenever you go and you do your thing, you're confident that you're the best at it. Mm-hmm. And when he's doing his thing, he's confident that he's the best at it. So um, if you've ever watched the original, is it the original Generation Iron? It's one of the Generation Irons. Jay Cutler's on there. Okay. And somebody asked Jay Cutler, the bodybuilder. <laughs> somebody yeah. asked Jay Cutler who his favorite bodybuilder is. What does he say? Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler's my favorite bodybuilder. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> what do you mean? He's the best ever. Uh, yeah. And that, and everybody, you know, a lot of people are like, oh. Mr. Cocky. Uh, or yeah, whatever. Mr. Cocky. Do you think that anybody who has ever been the best at anything, which he was Mr. Olympia several times, goes out there or wakes up in the morning mm-hmm. believing that they are not the best? Right. Absolutely not. Oh, when Josh Lane c- provides mobile and or virtual personal training, he knows he's the best. Yep, that's right. When exactly. Phil provides his at uh, OTG Fitness, which is a real place you can go to, uh, he knows he's the best. So, uh, yeah, we'll close on that note. B your own favorite, whatever it is that you are. That's right. And know that you're the best, guys. Peace out. Thanks for coming on, Josh. Um, And yeah, man, Jim Guys of South Houston and The Josh Lane. Check him out. Later.